In my mind, I'm still 23, but my body isn't. It's like having a second person in the house. It helps that much. The independence and the freedom and just the self-worth of doing it, not having to feel that, you know, you're somebody's burden. Hi, I'm Jeff Blankenberg, Alexa's Chief Technology Evangelist, and today I'm here in Calabasas, California, meeting with Labrador Systems. They make super cool accessibility robots for people with disabilities to use in their homes. Let's go check them out. Hey, Mike. Hey, Jeff. Uh, welcome to Labrador. Thank you for having me. Great to have you here. We have one of our interns coming out to greet you as well. We're excited to have you guys come in and uh, check everything out. Awesome. So what was the inspiration for creating the Retriever? You know, this really started with my mom and it goes back, the, the first inspiration was at my wedding when we were doing the dance together, because she said she was nervous when she was starting to dance. And it was, wasn't because of the wedding, it was because she said, yeah, I can't take a step back on my left heel or I can't go a certain direction. And as I just observed her more acutely, I realized she was using her hands as her extra pair of legs to stabilize her while she was just doing basic tasks in the house. And it's like, well, what if we could have something that did the moving of items for her so she could be very careful when she's going from place to place? And so when you say, I can use my voice and I can say something to a device, whether that's in this room or it's someplace else, bring me this. And for someone that has difficulty moving, that's massive. Here's a great example. Alexa, ask Lab One to bring the drinks. Okay, bringing drinks now. How does it know where drinks are? How, do, how does that process work? It's basically a series of bus stops, and the bus stops are the places you want the robot to go. So in the case where we have the refrigerator over there, there's a bus stop. It sends the command to open the door, and it sees those optical codes that are there. And it does almost like what happens with the space station and a spaceship now, is it then goes into this precise docking movement. It can dock within a few millimeters. And you can also do things like detect structure and obstacles in 3D. So when the retriever is driving, it's both visually tracking its environment, but it's looking all around to see who's in front of it. Is there a cat? All those sorts of things. It's got cameras on the side to watch out for obstacles and comes into position. And usually we have it lower, like it does now, uh, to make things just like right at the right height. Perfect. Don't mind if I do. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> so obviously, we have the Retriever. Right. We have Alexa. Right. They are both separate products that can do things independent of one another. Yeah. Um, but when you bring them together, I would imagine there's, there's a special fusion that happens because of that. So for an individual that has something that's physically restricting them or, 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 or getting in the way of what they want to do, something that's like more than a few feet away from them, it might as well be a mile. And now you're using voice to move things. That's magic uh, because it, it really does make a difference to them. Alexa, ask Lab One to come to the dining room. Okay, going to the dining room now. So. I'm always curious, how did you get into robotics in the first place? Where did you start? I got my start actually back in 1997 uh, working for LEGO and worked on a new project that was in a Skunk Works effort that was called LEGO Mindstorms. That was my experience on just learning the complexities of robotics and sensors, motors, and controls, and we've been evolving since then. Robotics is sort of the pirates of you know the technology era. That we, Our joke is that anything we put in here, ultimately you ought to be able to hack and get out of a product you can buy at Best Buy or Bed Bath beyond because it has to be made in that sort of volume so that by the time we put it together it's very low cost so we're adding value to the top of it and not reinventing the wheel and and that's really critical when you're taking on something that's this ambitious can you do it uh, bottom up for you straight up just to see the geometry of what we got going it'll hopefully be 30 percent that size well, i think that's a good direction for us to go did you find that there were things that like oh now that we have alexa were there any new experiences or new opportunities that you recognize for your customers? Yeah, I, I think it started like when we were first doing the demos and I was having trouble remembering all the commands and everything in the beginning. They said, well, Mike, you can just say, Alexa, ask Lab One for help. And then Alexa would say, how can I help you? I can do this, this, and this. And it's, I never thought of that. So I, I think that's really powerful uh, to basically start having a conversation with the product. And it also means that we take advantages. So like when Amazon makes improvements to Alexa, 
we get them immediately. It's not like an R&D effort or something that's 10 years off. We basically get to sort of level set with all those other products that are out there. Yeah, that makes sense to me too, because while you and your team are probably very talented at thinking about robots and the sensors that go into them, yeah. having to do all of the things that Alexa does also, yeah. That seems like an impossible task. No, and, and, and yeah, you have more than a few people at Amazon working on Alexa, and we <laughs> recognize that. So I think the reason why Alexa is such a strong starting point is that you pretty much don't have a heavy overhead of getting into developing and acting to a result. So I would say it was a few days or maybe at least at most a week before we had the prototype of that functionality. And then iteration, 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 letting us fine tune it, and in four weeks we've got the full demo. So it was just as simple as it could be. Okay, so we can retract further relative to the deck. Yeah, exactly. Cool. And by moving it off to the side, it gets out of the way of the camera. Okay, cool. So you and your team get to spend all your time in this building innovating, inventing, creating yep. the retriever. What is the outcome that you get from that? What is your experience when you get to see this being used by the kinds of people you're working with? Because it just seems to me like the audience for this specific device is massively underserved. Yeah, like what Amazon has done with Alexa is massive and the amount of people and resources and AI and layers of technology. But I think we're one of the first that can get a drink with it. And, um, <laughs> and whether that's a beer for someone to take a break or whether it's someone to get you know, water for them to take medication or stay hydrated, um, we, we bring, that's pretty awesome. Even my mom, who's 91, if I can bring something within 12 to 18 inches of her, she can grab that thing far better than a million dollar robotic arm. You combine us with voice and she can make action happen outside of her physical reach. And I think that's what, that's the payoff for this, is not the, the technology works, is that the technology works for people to do something meaningful.